Welcome to Presents. I'm your host, Ryan Seeker. My guests this week are Director and Assistant Director of Creative Services of Boise State's Athletic Department, Taylor Little and Dominic Sheldon. They are teaching Media 317 with an emphasis on sports broadcasting this semester. Please join me in welcoming Taylor Little and Dominic Sheldon. It's a pleasure to have you both on. Thrilled to be here. Yeah, thanks for having us. Awesome, yeah, of course. Now, a little background, Taylor, we'll start with you. Um, how did you get involved with Boise State's athletics? Uh, so I got here as an undergraduate in 2006 and uh, started a job pretty much like my first week of school with the football program. So I worked for football uh, throughout my entire undergrad. And when I graduated in December of 2010, uh, I was offered a full-time position um, and I started in May. And that's kind of, have just worked my way up the ladder since then. Awesome, Dominic, how about you? How did you get involved? So I'm Boise native. Uh, I knew I wanted to get into television in high school. I went to Washington State for my undergraduate, got a broadcast news degree there. From there, I worked in Montana as a sports anchor for five years. And then I had some connections that worked in the department here and I knew I wanted to get back home to Boise because it's such a great place to live. Mm -hmm. And had the opportunity to come work for Taylor as a graduate assistant while I worked on a master's degree. Once I was done with that, I got offered a full-time position. So uh, a, a long road, but thrilled to be working at Boise State. That's awesome. Alrighty, now, Taylor, how did you get involved with this class? So we, uh, at least in athletics, have been trying to kind of get this going for, for a little while, and, and we were close this summer, or this past summer, summer of 2018, and uh, didn't, didn't quite get there, but uh, we decided to kind of just keep pushing through and got the curriculum built um, with the guys in the comm department uh, in the fall, and here we are, got it going for spring, and had some openings in our schedule to bring some crew in, and it's been, uh, a, a good ride so far, That's real awesome. good. Yeah. Yeah. Dominic, how about you? How did you get involved? So just being a part of the department, we had, we being Taylor and, and our superiors had been talking about trying to get students more involved in the athletic department, particularly in the live streaming we do for the Mountain West Network. And I was fortunate enough to be a part of those crews as a student when I was an undergrad at Washington State. And so I knew the value in it and we weren't really sure how to go about it. We just knew that we wanted students to be on these crews get a, a look at what Division I broadcasts are like, and it's been a really good experience so far. I think it's, it's helped our shows, and hopefully it's helped the students. Oh yeah, of course. All right, now um, Taylor, as the director, what does your job entail? Uh, well, my day-to-day -day job uh, as the director of creative services is uh, to oversee our video department for Olympic sports. So uh, we have uh, obviously a lot of other sports other than football here. Um, okay. So. I'm in charge of just making sure that anything in internal and external facing is, is taken care of from our perspective. So I oversee our budget, I oversee Dom and, and another assistant and a graduate assistant as well. Um, and just kind of make sure that we're on the right track all the time. And, and I'm the one that has to go face our superiors when it comes time to, to do performance evals and, and answer for our department and, and make sure that everything's good. As far as a, from the event stream perspective goes, um, I've sort of evolved into our engineer in charge, I guess. Okay. Um, so I just kind of make sure that everything is running and make sure that video signal goes where it needs to go. And yeah. I've kind of taken a step back from, uh, from the live production stuff and just kind of helped it run. So Awesome. I'm sure you always have fun with that, right? You yeah, love it's your a good job. time. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, great when it's, it's great when it's good. It's good. It's, uh, <laughs> it's slightly enjoyable when it's bad. Yeah. So. And Dominic, how about for you as the assistant, what, what does your job entail? It really depends on the season. I mean, okay. right now, uh, a lot of what I'm doing is working on these crews, making sure the students are up to speed on the various positions in the truck. Um, I do a lot of the social media, digital content videos that you see coming from the athletic department. And during the football season, I travel with football and I help direct the Inside Bronco television show that runs locally on KTVB. And so it really depends. During the football season, I'm pretty heavy in football stuff and then going to basketball, but uh, a lot of digital content and just helping out with the streams that we do. Awesome. Now, a little bit about the class. Um, so what does being the director of creative services mean, Taylor? Oh, how man. Would you, how would you view your job as uh, the director? That's fairly philosophical. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, would, I would suppose um, that the being the director of creative services meaning uh, or means, I guess, that I'm sort of partly responsible for uh, coming up with a vision for, for our department and where it's moving toward. Um, that's sort of been my focus since stepping into the role anyway, is that uh, trying to come up with a vision for where 
uh, not only our department uh, from just a video perspective, but our department from a stream perspective, an internal perspective, and an external perspective, which way we're moving in the next year, five years, 10 years, whatever, um, and, and how we're evolving to, to meet the, the needs of basically our department. Um, that seems pretty um, ethereal, I guess, um, but it's sort of what I've been doing, I guess, for the last three or four years in a roundabout way. Now I just have a little bit more ownership over it. So nice. um, yeah, I guess just trying to figure out where we're moving toward and, and making sure that we're taking the right steps to move toward whatever that end goal is. There you go. Now, Dominic, how would you view your job as being the assistant director? Yeah, I don't know th how much the title plays into it, but as far as what I do and how I view my job, I think it's we have a unique opportunity to tell stories that other people are not. As you see, newsrooms across the country unfortunately cut back on sports coverage. And when you look at locally, we don't really have, we have one station that covers sports on a full-time basis and there are three TV stations. So as someone who came from that world, that's disappointing to see, mm -hmm. but it gives us a unique opportunity within the department to tell our own story and give a face to these athletes. Everyone can go watch a Bronco football game and they'll know numbers and they'll know stats, but you don't necessarily know the people behind all of those. And so for me, I view it as a chance to tell stories and give the public a, a perspective that they might not otherwise have about the type of personality and the hard work that goes on behind the scenes. Awesome. Now, uh, what does this new course, UTP Sports Broadcasting, entail, Taylor? Ooh, uh, a lot. Okay. Um, I think that probably when we first kind of set forth uh, a, a plan, and I'll be totally honest, when, when Dom kind of pushed the plan out there, I think that it was, with the, with the idea in mind that we were gonna try as hard as we could to educate people to, to be ready to step into the real world. If, if sports broadcasting is truly what you wanted to do, we're gonna show you every single aspect of what sports broadcasting entails. And it's, it's not just live events. I mean, we've covered a lot in class from uh, women in sport to play-by-play -play commentators to radio everything we've tried as hard as we could to really cover all of our bases so that you know when you come out of our program at least this class that you'll have been exposed to a little bit of everything within sports broadcasting that's awesome now um how did this class come to be dominic i mean we talked about it a little bit already but it was uh, from our superiors and some of the the folks in the comm department realizing that there'd been i don't know about a divide but a lack of working together between the comm department, the broadcasting students, and what we're doing in the athletics department. So there was a need, uh, I think, from both sides to get students involved. And I looked at it from when I was in school, I was able to work on these crews. I was able to work for ESPN, Fox Sports Net, and it was a great experience, but I did that because I made an in with the athletic department. I didn't make it because of the curriculum that we had. And so for me, I wanted, and I think Taylor wanted as well, this class to be about real world, real world experience. So you're talking to directors from Root Sports, CBS Sports Network, you're talking to people that make their careers in sports broadcasting. And so we can talk about how we view things and that might be helpful, but I think for us it was putting them in front of people that have made a living in sports, what the steps are to do that, and then just what type of a person you have to be once you get those opportunities and what you have to do to move up the ladder. Awesome, that sounds fun. So um, what do you do in the class as a student? Like what do the students do? I'll let Dom yeah, either answer, you can answer first. This. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, like I said, it, it's very practicum based. And so weekly we meet, uh, two hours, 45 minutes, and each class we will introduce them to someone in the sports world community. It can be someone that works in New York City, someone that works in Seattle, Spokane. Uh, if they're local in Boise, then they come and they meet with us in the class. And so they get these guest speaking engagements. They're very informal, but it gives you a perspective that you may not have had. I mean, we have our sports information directors come in and a lot of people that want to get into sports don't know what a sports information director does when they're in college. So getting that perspective, and I think we will wanted to tackle it from a holistic view of you get, even if, you want to be a sideline reporter, you need to know what the people behind the scenes do because they will make your job easier. Okay. And then once we get into the truck, it's just doing every single position we have. And, and Taylor could probably touch on that. Yeah, I think kind of the idea there was that you're going to kind of get thrown into the fire a little bit. Um, okay. we, we took some time, I, probably the first, I, 
probably the students in the class would tell you that it felt like an eternity, but probably the first two or three weeks we took sort of as like a trial run that you're gonna come shadow whatever role you wanna learn in the truck, you're gonna hang out with us for a, a, an event or two and just kind of see where we're at. And then we slowly started working them in. So for, for women's basketball, for example, you, you might TD the second quarter, but the rest of the time I'll do it or Dom will do it. Okay. Um, and now we're to a point that we're coming up uh, on their final weekend where all three games for softball against Colorado State will be 100% student run. They will fill every position in the truck from start to finish. Um, they write run of show, they do everything. And so it's been a progression and it's been a process and it's probably felt like an eternity for them. Uh, I was thinking about it uh, a week or so ago that man, this came really fast. And I'm sure that when you're on the other end of it, it's felt really slow, but it's uh, it's been a process and I think that in sports broadcasting or in broadcasting in general, one of the most important things you can do is get reps. And th the more and more reps we could give them, the better. And I know that uh, in the beginning it was very few and now it's, they're pretty much doing everything for us. We, we did uh, two weekends ago for the very first time uh, since the Mountain West Network began, which was in 2014, I believe. It was the first time that we've ever had a 100% student crude or Boise State employee crude wow. uh, production, which we've not done that. We usually have to go out to contractors to do that. So to get them into a position that we feel comfortable enough that they're able to perform to the standard that we have, it's awesome. Awesome, guys. Now, um, as, as a student, say, uh, what are the goals for each student in your class from beginning of the semester to the end of the semester? Either you can answer this. I think the, the goal from a functional standpoint is to be proficient in whatever your interest is. If you wanna be play by play, we want you to be comfortable, we want you to have a demo reel so you can go out after the semester, give it to potential employers to get a job. Okay. Um, whether that's camera operating, same thing. You can have a demo reel of all your best shots to go show someone and say, hey, I know I'm just coming out of college, but I've done this. And it's just getting you ready for the real world, getting that real world experience from a, I guess, holistic standpoint. We also preach the way you should treat people because in the world of sports broadcasting, it's such an incredibly small world. I was in it professionally for five years and I've got connections across the country. And if you have a bad experience with one person, mm -hmm. that bad experience might be in Boise, Idaho, but it'll get over to New York and people will ask you, should I work with this person? Should I hire this person? And so we want them to come out and be a good represent representative of Boise State to where when they do get those first opportunities to work on a national broadcast crew, they're known as hard workers, good people, and trustworthy. Awesome. Yeah, I, I mean, I would think I would echo that sentiment okay. that we want to make sure that you have something that you're proud of to put on your resume. And I mean, we have a unique opportunity in that we do over like 100 broadcasts a year. So if, if we've got the opportunity to, to throw you in on a soccer tape and you wanna be a play-by-play -play guy for soccer, you've got actual play-by-play -play soccer experience that you can send out to whomever. Or if you wanna be a replay op for division one men's basketball crews or women's basketball crews, you were the replay op on these basketball broadcasts. So I, I think just being able to to have the unique experience to come in and say, I did this, here's my work. You can talk to the guys that I worked with. Um, I mean, that's pretty invaluable if you ask me. Awesome. So uh, you guys touched on football and basketball, but are there any other sports you guys do as well? I'm sure almost all sports, right? Yeah, uh, football, men's and women's basketball, gymnastics, soccer, uh, volleyball, both indoor and sand, uh, softball, soon to be baseball, uh, and I'm trying to think. We do a few special events here and there okay. as well. Um, but between those sports, we cover, yeah, pretty close to 90 to 100 events a year. So There you go. Now, I should have asked, are there any sports you guys don't cover? <laughs> Short answer is no. But okay. that, as far as live event coverage, we don't do live event coverage for everything because okay. our golf teams, for example, rarely compete in Boise. They're usually on the road, so okay. we can't we can't cover them. Um, track and field only has one home outdoor event. So really, if there's anything on campus, we cover it. And even if it's not on campus, we'll send a videographer and editor to go shoot those events, do interviews, and put together social media content. So we cover every sport, 
we cover every event as well as we can, but as far as a true broadcast with a full crew, only the home events, but it is the majority of our sports. Okay, perfect. Now, uh, what opportunities do students have with production and broadcasting athletics? Anything they want. I, I don't yeah. think that uh, anybody believed us when we said on day one of the class, like if you want a TD or you want to direct, you're gonna get a chance to do it. Um, but yeah, any single role that is part of the production, you have the opportunity to work yourself into it. Um, and you can be a grip for the entire semester if you wanted to, or you can be the TD and director, but chances are you're gonna have to start out as a grip. And, and the goal was to get everybody to kind of work through every single position at least once or twice and become somewhat proficient in it. Um, the, the camera ops, uh, that was pretty easy. Um, coming out of the UTP program, you guys already uh, all have like a pretty good idea of how to run cameras and, and what we're looking for in terms of shot composition and stuff like that. The more technical roles, obviously, we have to kind of get you broken into it a little bit. But yeah, I think anything you want to do, um, and it's sort of expanded a little bit. I think that it initially, maybe our intent wasn't to, to have folks act as producers or anything like that, but it sort of morphed into that and they've really taken it and owned it, which is awesome to have ownership of the product that's gonna go out there um, like I said, I'm, I'm fired up to see what they come up with next weekend. I, the, we did a lot of stuff. We had to push ourselves a lot this past weekend with softball against Nevada um, to do a lot of things we've never done before. Um, a lot of that might have had to do with resources and manpower, but now we've got it. And, and they took the leap and they decided that they wanted to do some certain things and we did it, so. There you go. Anything to touch on that? No, hey, Taylor, he, he Taylor touched like it all. It. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. All right. now. Um, Inside the classroom, what does the hands-on experience look like for the students? The hands-on experience is all out of the TV truck. It's gotcha. not really in the classroom. Oh, okay. um, I mean, we'll first week bring in a camera that we use and show you how to operate the camera, take you over to Taco Bell Arena, show you how to wrap cable. And a lot of the, the early level UTP classes already touch on that, but we just make it drilled in that you have to do this correctly if you're ever gonna work on a national show. And so. There really isn't a ton of hands-on in the class. That's where you're talking to industry professionals. You're asking questions. You're making those connections. Okay. And then the hands-on experience is out in the field. And uh, this year, the, the bar to get the, the fullest possible grade was 12 varsity events or UTP sporting events. Mm -hmm. um, some of them, some of the students were able to translate that into working for the Western Athletic Conference when they had a track meet here, or working for stadium broadcasting as a social media correspondent during their broadcast. So there are other opportunities to get those credited hours, but we had several students that are pushing 20 plus events, and they certainly don't have to do that, but I think they enjoy it and they see the value in getting that experience. That's very cool. Yeah, Anything? I, I think we knew something was right when kids just started showing up, even when they weren't scheduled, just to hang out uh, That's awesome. and, and work. So. Yeah, I mean, anything and, and everything that they want to do outside of the classroom is, is available to them, so. Awesome, do you guys have any special guests that you guys bring in for any of the students, or? Yeah, every week, every really? week someone new. Okay. Um, and sometimes multiple people. I mean, we, I, I look at it and I'm pretty proud of what we were able to accomplish. We were talking to a uh, assistant director from CBS Sports Network based in New York. We're talking to a director from Root Sports and we got to have a clip of the behind the scenes directing and producing audio tracks that the internal truck listens to. And so you can see the way that they speak to one another and the way it translates to a program feed that the audience sees. Talk to countless on-air people, print reporters, um, talk to the first female sports director in the city of Spokane about women in sports broadcasting and, and the, the cultural aspect of covering sports. And so you talk to an expert in their field every single week. And I think that is, has been super valuable for the students. I think it's been super valuable for us too, and it's helped us kind of know where we should pinpoint our focus. Awesome, perfect. All right, um, are there any advantages to having student crews working as opposed to a paid crew? Y yes, there okay. certainly are. It's, uh, it's a good question. It's a trade-off because in the beginning when you have these student crews, they're not as adept, they haven't done it. It's not that they don't have the ability to, it's just they don't know what the expectations are and they don't have the experience. But as we're seeing now, I mean, Taylor is mentioning this past weekend, we were pushing and we were doing things on the broadcast that we hadn't done in previous years. A lot of that is because you've got higher numbers of crew members, but a lot of it is the students come in and they, number one, they want a good grade, 
And number two, they know that the harder they work, the better it's going to look, the better their demo tapes will look. And so there's a lot more effort being put in by the end of the semester. And it's easy enough for a, you know, a contract worker to come in, they're capable, they do their job, they leave. They don't have any emotional attachment to the product, they're just there to do a job. And I think what we've seen is these students, everyone in the class has been really passionate about doing a good job and working really hard. And so you get a little bit more accountability, I'd say, if you get the right crew. And I think we have, we've been lucky with the seven students that took this course. But the work that goes in and the pride that they have often leads to a better result. It might take a while to get there. You might have some rough patches where some shows don't look as good, but eventually once they get proficient, it's been really impressive. Awesome. Now, are any other schools doing this in the Mountain West that you guys know of? <laughs> to our knowledge, no. Um, okay. That doesn't mean that there aren't some sort of uh, student programs available to them, but at least in terms of how our program is constructed and, and how it works, to our knowledge, it doesn't exist anywhere else in the Mountain West or, for that matter, really on the West Coast and except for in a few Pac-12 schools. Wow. So it's, it's pretty rare. I mean, it's not rare that students work on these crews, but I think it's, it's a little more rare to see courses mm -hmm. that are designed like this because it is, it's not a traditional academic course. You know, your, your in-class sessions are spent listening to professionals in the industry. The, the only place that I know for sure runs a very similar class to this is the University of North Carolina and they have a CBS sports director that teaches that course as well. Okay. Um, so it, there are classes that are similar across the country, uh, and there might be some in the Mountain West, but it's not common. Okay, pretty cool. All right, so are there opportunities available for students in athletics after this class? I mean, we would certainly like there to be. Yeah. Um, I, I think the plan is right now, uh, we've got two students that are certainly tabbed to come back and intern with us in the fall. And, and work through some events with us there. I mean, obviously you're only exposed to, to two or three sports, four technically, I guess, in the springtime, but they'll get a, a whole new landscape to work with in the fall when it comes to volleyball and soccer and football. Um, but yeah, I, I would, once you're integrated into our crew, you're a part of our crew. Uh, and student status or contractor status or whatever to me at least for me that doesn't matter we're a pretty tight-knit group um, it's been the same group of like seven eight guys now for about seven years and and these guys are all now part of that group as far as I'm concerned so um, I, I mean they'll they'll be involved if they want to be when they leave and and if if not that's great if they move on to other things fantastic if they want to hang around Boise and, and keep working with us they're certainly more than welcome to. Um, and I would like to think that maybe eventually that will expand into, if you're a senior and you're done, it, maybe a graduate assistantship so that you can go on and keep working on your postgraduate work. Um, but that's yet to be seen. I think the hope from my perspective is sure there will be opportunities with Boise State, but there will be opportunities elsewhere. Uh, if you wanna uproot and intern in New York City for the summer, you've met someone in this class that can help facilitate that where you're working for CBS Sports for the summer. If you want to go to Seattle and intern for Root Sports. For me, the Boise State opportunities are great, but the idea is that you are being introduced to so many people that are way more influential than either Taylor or I, and that will help you get connections in the industry and opportunities. So the hope is that there's opportunities everywhere. Okay. Do you guys have any other questions for us on the show? I don't think so. Awesome. You guys did fantastic, but unfortunately, that is all the time we have today. Thank you again, Taylor Little and Dominic Sheldon, for coming on to the show. I'm your host, Ryan Seeker, and this has been Presents.